Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life, putting together here our full review, final thoughts on the LG G Watch. Now, we've had it in hand for a couple of weeks, or on wrist for a couple of weeks, and I feel pretty comfortable about Android Wear as a platform and the G Watch as a device specifically. So, you know, some thoughts on if you should choose this over the Gear Live or wait for the Moto 360. I think you know where we probably stand on that already. But anyways, we're going to try to cover it all, so stick with us. From a hardware and spec standpoint, the G-Watch isn't going to blow you away, but it probably doesn't need to. It is just a watch after all. But it does have a 1.65 inch 280 by 280 IPS LCD. Weighs 63 grams, which is neither light nor heavy. It's somewhere in the middle, but you will feel that weight. Has a 400 milliamp hour battery, 1.2 gigahertz CPU, Bluetooth 4.0, 4 gig of internal storage, and 512 megabits of RAM. And as you can see here, there's USB pogo pin charging action going on here. So you do get this little dock in the box, basically attach the pins, plug into micro USB and charge away. And as you can see here, it's magnetic. So won't actually fall or device won't slip out. It's actually kind of nice. Uh, and yeah, so you just set it on a desk, plug it in and charge it every single night. Cause yep, you will have to charge it every single night. Uh, nice thing is there is this uh, adhesive on the bottom. So if you want to stick this to a place where you don't ever feel like removing, uh, you can stick it, slap your watch on there, and actually do a fairly nice job of charging. Uh, in terms of design, this is about as basic as it gets, folks. You got a cheap-feeling rubber wristband attached to uh, what is a black rectangle made of plastic. So you've got shiny black plastic on the top half and then sort of matte textured plastic on the bottom half it's pretty uninspired there's you know an lg logo on the back nothing on the front except a bunch of bezel it's not the prettiest watch ever compared to the gear live in 360 by moto you know it actually doesn't compare at all it is uh the plainest of devices so you know if you want the plainest wristwatch ever this could be it it's just uh not necessarily for me though this is what it looks like on wrist Navigating through Android Wear is pretty simple for the most part. You can touch it to wake it up when the screen goes to sleep and you know just shows you clock or actually if it's on your wrist and you tilt it the proper direction or catch it just right, it'll actually kind of wake up automatically. It's not all that great, but it does work. Um, otherwise, you swipe up and down, left and right to get between cards, look at new cards, look at actions that are available for cards. So you can see here with uh, the step counter, if I swipe to the left, it shows me steps and it actually will show you a history of the last week though. I just factory reset this so it doesn't look like I've taken many steps. Uh, but you would swipe uh, up then to get to the next card if you've got one. You can see I've got a stock tracker here which is being pulled in from Google Now. And I'm tapping to expand it and tapping to shrink it again. And you'll notice there's sort of this blue air, blurred area down here. Just kind of tap and uh, you can expand those. So you'll see that with Gmail messages, things like that. Swipe over here, disclaimer, open on phone. Not a lot with the stock card, uh, but swipe to the right and it goes away. So you've got a package being tracked here uh, and there's actually not much more you can view there. It does tell me who it's from though, or open on phone. And another package here, sort of same deal. Do you have a nice weather card though? Swipe to the left brings you a four day forecast with highs and lows. If you're traveling around, you actually get multiple cities and stuff. And then when you get to the end and you have no extra cards, you can see you kind of get this pullback effect and when you get notifications they actually do just pop up right on your wrist assuming you have it connected properly to your device so i'm trying to get myself a hangouts message here we got to vibrate there it is I don't, I don't know why that didn't pop up anyways it comes to the top when you get a new notification you can actually tap on those or swipe in and actually view your hangouts conversation and if you want to respond, you can actually do that using your voice or you can open on the phone. So if we try to reply uh, on the device, we'll see how this works. If I just say something like, thanks for the test, it just got the thanks for part. So it doesn't always work. You can cancel that. I accidentally hit OK. So it actually sent that thanks for, but it does actually send. And I've had some decent conversations using just my Android Wear device when I'm on the treadmill or something like that. So it does actually work. Uh, let's check out a Gmail message. So send a Gmail message on over so you can see what this looks like when it shows up, if it does. There we go. So it says this is a test. And uh, if you had multiple conversations or multiple Gmails, you get that sort of blur line and you can tap on it and see more. Uh, but if you have just an individual one, you can delete, reply, or open on phone. 
And just to show you how that works, I will just delete. And that actually deletes from my phone. It's not just deleting the notification, it's actually deleting that email from my account, which is actually kind of cool. So in terms of basic navigation, you know, that's pretty much it. You get this sort of swipe up, swipe down. You can see the little dots that tell you have new cards. Uh, but the other piece here is your voice. So you can either say, okay, Google, and that will launch it, or you can tap on it. Uh, you can see here, if I say, okay, Google, that pops up. If you don't want to use your voice, you can actually scroll down and it'll tell you all of the different things uh, that you can do with it, like navigate to a gas station, set a timer, start or stop, stopwatch. You can actually call a car if you have one of those services. Uh, but basically you just say, okay, Google, how old is LeBron James? I think that's the one we always do. Actually, yes, it is. And that will just pop right up and you get information on LeBron. You can see a little picture of him in the background, even more information like who his wife is, how much money he makes, things like that. Now you can continue to do these. Um, and again, you can initiate those with your voice or actually just tap on the clock and it will get you right into that sort of dictation area. Um, there's also settings in this menu as well, like adjusting your brightness, which you will probably need to do because these devices are terrible in direct sunlight. You can tell your screen to be always on or off. There's airplane mode. You can power your device on and off here, restart it, reset it, change your watch face. I'll show you a different way to do that as well. Um, you can see here, uh, if we go into about, actually there's developer options and those are not enabled out of the box. In order to enable those, you have to go into about, tap on the build number a bunch and it will actually unlock that for you. So if you wanna take screenshots and uh, enable debugging and things like that, you will have to do it that way. And in here is actually where you do that. So you can see that going on there. Uh, but if we jump back here, I'll show you a long press on your home screen. This will pop up your watch face switching or clock face switching. And the G watch actually has a bunch uh, more than the gear live though. I'm not a big fan of most of them. Uh, you can also do this thing where you swipe down from the top to get your battery percentage date. And this is also how you mute notifications on your device in case you just want to do it on the fly and not have to worry about doing it um, on your phone or something. So you just sort of swipe down and you'll get this little vibrate and it'll tell you if you're muted or unmuted or something like that. It's actually a pretty handy way to quickly mute your device. In terms of other uh, voice actions and stuff, you can initiate most of these just by actually tapping on them. Uh, but let's say just for another example, you want to do something like pull up your steps because you've swiped it away. You could say, okay, Google, show me my steps. And of course it aired out. Okay, Google, show me my steps. Not working again. How about one more time? Okay, Google, show me my steps. No, I didn't say data. So it, it's been pretty hit or miss for me. I'm not going to lie. I haven't had that much luck with it. But again, you can initiate these by just tapping on them. So you could tap on take note and it'll ask if you want to take a note. Or you could tap on email Jim and it would email. You could set up an email or stop start watch, stop watch and it will sort of get into that stuff. Uh, but that's just the basics of Android Wear in terms of software. Outside of hardware and on-device software, the other piece here to Android Wear is the companion app that you install on your Android 4.3 Plus device. So you can see I've got it up here. It shows that I'm connected to a G Watch. You know, this is sort of how you get up and running, pair the device, things like that all has to be done through this app. And you can actually tap this little button here if you want to disconnect or reconnect quickly. And it's actually pretty easy to do. You also have some settings. And uh, this would be where you actually can mute notifications. So if you want a specific app to never send a notification to Android Wear, this is where you would do it. You hit the plus, let it load up your list of apps and find one like say the calendar. Say so you don't want Google Calendar showing. Once you have that in there, that will no longer show notifications on Android Wear. And you can do that for a number of apps. Uh, but you can also check for screen always on, you know, turn debugging on or show calendar events. You can resync a bunch of apps if you're having bugs. Uh, this is also where you control those voice actions and which apps they are attached to. So most of these, there aren't gonna be a bunch of different options. Um, you know, like Google Fit right now only has Google Fit actions. Uh, but like take a note, you can see I've got Google Keep and Trello in there. Uh, and so depending on which app developers, you know, start integrating Android where you can actually switch these. So they default to certain apps, and things like that. So you don't always have to use the Google stuff. There's also a button down here that jumps you into the Android Wear section on Google Play. 
So you can look at all the latest apps that have built in Android Wear support, you know, like Banjo and IFTTT and uh, some of these other apps. So there's also a uh, quick menu up here where you can pair new wearables and things. But, you know, this is just sort of a basic tour of the companion app. Now you have to have this installed. It is free. And again, Android 4.3 plus. Uh, but yeah, you want to grab this and this helps you get set up with your Android Wear device. Reviewing products like LG's G-Watch or even Samsung's Gear Live is quite difficult because they're sort of like beta products, right? And including the software they run, which is Android Wear, is also new enough and fresh enough that we don't, we don't exactly know what's going to happen to it, where it's going to go, if it's going to be great, if it's going to be bad. And so the G-Watch and the Gear Live are sort of, their futures sort of depend on Android Wear becoming awesome. Because right now they're fairly bare bones. Uh, you know, their designs aren't great and that's never going to change, but the potential here is all dependent on what developers do with them. So at this time, I would say it's tough for me to recommend that either A, yes, you run out and buy the G-Watch or B, uh, you don't mess with it at all and you just completely leave it alone because it's terrible. I, I can't say either one of those. I'm really down the middle because... No, we, we just don't know a lot at this point. Uh, number one, the Moto 360 is coming out in hopefully a month, and it could be amazing. And so I would say you should at least wait for that. Uh, we don't know the price or anything, some specs and features, but you should at least wait for that. Uh, and two, in two months, we could have all sorts of really cool functionality from apps and uh, Google Now growing and things like that. Android Wear could just become awesome. And a year from now, it could even be better. And two years from then, it could even be better. Uh, but we don't know if that's actually going to happen. We have to wait and see. Uh, speaking of the G-Watch specifically, though, there's some things that would really turn me off. Uh, most notably, the display. If you're using this at all outdoors, it's never going to work for you in the sun. Uh, for example, I had a half marathon to run this past weekend, and this wasn't even an option to wear, even though it has you know Runtastic compatibility and things like that. I just knew that I wouldn't be able to keep my pace or see it in direct sunlight whatsoever because it's that bad. So there's things like that. You know, the battery life on this and the Gear Live lasts a day, so you have to charge them at all times if that's something you want to do. Uh, and they're not really affordable. You know, at 229, the G Watch is more expensive than the Gear Live, yet it lacks the Gear Live's heart rate sensor and also the design, which I would say is subpar. So at this time, G-Watch, not something I would say go buy unless you are an early adopter, you love all things Google, you have to be on the bleeding edge of technology, and it's just something you can't live without. Uh, for most of you, though, you're not going to be missing out at this time. You're probably better off waiting to see where the platform goes.